All right, we are live. Great, thank you, Matthew, and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the January 22nd um, meeting of the uh, House Energy and Technology Committee. Um, we're going to meet twice today. Um, this morning, we have uh, a committee discussion on a presentation received and a request from uh, the administration and agency of natural resources with regard to um, a budget adjustment appropriation for a million dollars. We're gonna discuss that right now with the committee. Um, and then we will adjourn this morning, this afternoon, we're gonna come back, I believe at 1.30 um, to have a presentation from the Department of Public Service. Um, so that information is on uh, committee's website and, um, and our agenda. Um, so I will just kick off the um, discussion for our hearing um, just to review some of the things that we heard earlier this week. And I know that Representative Pat um, also touched base or at least um, set in on um, some testimony that was given to the Appropriations Committee and heard um, some of the discussion over there as well. Um, uh, earlier this week, we heard from uh, the Secretary of ANR, uh, Julie Moore, who um, presented information to our committee about a request for a million dollar appropriation one time money through the Budget uh, Adjustment Act, which is in the Appropriations Committee right now. Um, our, uh, uh, our task this morning is to uh, determine whether or not we want to support that recommendation from the administration um, and, and pass that um, uh, message of support back on to the Appropriations Committee. Um, the, the million dollar request of one-time money was essentially to support the work of the Climate Council, which was set up under the Global Warming Solutions Act uh, last year. Um, the Climate Council uh, began their work in uh, November, I believe, and has met um, three or four times since then. There's a very aggressive timeline that has been set up for the completion of the work of the council. Um, and even though the council has met um, a few times since November, uh, I think our understanding is that the, the work of the council is really just beginning and the subcommittees are uh, in the process of being um, established right now. Um, there was uh, an, an ongoing general fund appropriation last year that was made uh, to support the work of the council in the form of three positions um, uh, that are going to be staffed through the Agency of Natural Resources. What we're talking about this morning is, is not that money. That is general fund money to hire those three positions. This money very specifically was um, primarily to uh, um, support technical work that the council needs in the form of economic um, and emissions modeling. Um, as well as um, money that would support uh, the facilitation of the work of the council, public outreach, um, work that's gotta be done over the next, um, I think it's 10 or 11 months. So even though this is one-time money um, in FY21, um, it is, I think it was presumed by the secretary that some of this money would actually um, be spent as we get into FY22. It wasn't just going to be money um, to be expended by uh, June 30th this year. Some of the money would actually spill into the next year. Um, some of the things that the, uh, that the secretary talked about, which I was particularly appreciative of, was the work she had done in um, looking to some similar work that had been done in the state of Maine. Um, Maine is, you know, somewhat similar state to Vermont in terms of um, the, the, you know, the rural nature of the state. Uh, in the past year or so, uh, the state of Maine has gone through a very similar exercise. So I think it's um, particularly relevant to look to Maine in terms of the work that their climate council has done in the last year and some of the work that they needed to do to, um, uh, to accelerate their process and to make that process of, of greatest utility as they kind of push forward with, um, uh, with climate policy in their state. Um, you know, one of the things that I heard the, the, uh, the, the secretary say was that with this type of work, um, I think she said it's like engineering work, um, you know, it's, 
uh, you know, good, fast and cheap, you pick two. And um, we have definitely uh, looked to the Climate Council to work quickly. Um, they have to complete their work and present um, the work of the council. I believe it's by December 1st this year. So we have definitely set a fast timeline. Um, clearly we want the work to be good um, and um, supportive of policy work that we are going to do and that the administration is gonna do going forward. And um, again, I think looking to the work that Maine has done as well as Massachusetts and New York, um, the, the secretary has uh, and the administration has determined that this additional information, um, particularly for the technical work is, um, is necessary. So um, having heard the secretary's um, uh, testimony in our committee, and I also listened on, I think 1.75 speed uh, in the appropriations committee, heard her testimony there and some of the questions there. Um, you know, I would just open it up for, for conversation um, and, and thoughts that, that other folks in the committee might have. So uh, go, go ahead, Avram. I see your hand up. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I sat in actually on, uh, or listened in on, on two uh, appropriations committee uh, hearings. The very first one was several, a few days ago, was when uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Gresham, Finance and Management, uh, Commissioner Gresham, gave an overview of the entire uh, budget adjustment and, and walked through everything that's in, in, in that proposal, including what we're talking about today. Uh, and yesterday I listened after the fact uh, to uh, uh, the, specifically to um, uh, Secretary Moore's uh, testimony uh, after the fact only because uh, we were at that time uh, hearing from the uh, electric utility folks and I definitely want to be part of that. Um, so, uh, Secretary Moore's uh, testimony, she did not give, when she, when she was in our committee, she started with a sort of overview, high level uh, summary of activity to date, organizing activity to date and all of that. She did not go into that with the Appropriations Committee and just went to the, um, the uh, appropriations, the, the budget adjustment request directly. And her presentation was basically the same as, as what, uh, uh, what she gave in, in our committee. Uh, there was not a lot of uh, discussion uh, after that from the committee. Um, there were a couple of questions which were also covered when she was here. One was about um, uh, what was the basis for the, uh, the estimate for the consulting work and all of that that needs to be done. And, and she mentioned again that, that it was based on experience in other states, particularly Maine. Um, and uh, committee chair, uh, Representative Hooper asked uh, why uh, this needed to be in the budget adjustment could, and, and could it not um, uh, be included in the budget proposal that we're gonna be working on for the coming, coming year. And uh, uh, Secretary Moore's answer was that um, there's a, a huge amount of work, as, as the chair just said, uh, that needs to be done in a very short time frame. Uh, it can't be done on a volunteer basis, relying on the expertise of members of the uh, um, of the commission uh, or by the the uh, the staff that have been hired to basically do the organizing work and and the process work uh, of the council. She she used the phrase "there's simply not enough hours in the day." Uh, to do what what we need to be uh, need to do. So that's um, really uh, just telling you what I heard in the appropriations committee. Uh, and I'll start and I'll finish by saying that I th think this uh, proposal was uh, well thought through. And as I said, when when Secretary Moore was uh, was in our committee, um, I. Um, Although no one, you know, it, it is additional money, uh, but I uh, was uh, um, uh, impressed by the commitment uh, to, to get this very ambitious uh, project done uh, in the time frame and in the spirit uh, of the bill that we passed last year. So I, I support the proposal. Right. Thank you, Avram. Um, Laura, I see your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we did pass a bill with an extremely 
aggressive timeline in it uh, because we have an extremely aggressive problem in climate change and also adaptation, economic adaptation um, and uh, infrastructure adaptation in uh, throughout Vermont, uh, particularly in our rural and poor areas uh, of the state <clears throat> that are being left behind. Of course, we know that those who can adapt already are adapting. And so uh, I am quite pleased to see that this um, request has come in from the administration to ensure that this work can be done in a timely fashion and in a thorough fashion. And uh, I absolutely support this request. So th thank you for that, Laura. Um, something else that I would say um, that uh, has made me appreciative of um, the administration stepping forward with this request is that the Global Warming Solutions Act is something that the House of Representatives passed, I think it was uh, 11 months ago, almost exactly. It was at the end of February last year. It was pre-COVID. Um, you know, we didn't know what was going to hit us uh, two weeks after that. And, and ultimately, this bill didn't become law until the end of September or early October. And um, at the time, we were envisioning uh, this process and this work starting, um, you know, probably three months uh, prior to the time that it actually did. So, the, you know, the, the COVID um, pandemic has, has even while well, it's, it's created a lot of challenges for us, it's even more compressed uh, the work that's gotta be done here, which is um, you know, one of the reasons I think that this additional, um, these additional resources are necessary to get this work done on time. So, um, uh, so I agree with you, uh, Representative Sibili. I, I appreciate the administration coming forward with this. We set out an, uh, an aggressive timeline to begin with, which has become more aggressive because of the pandemic. And um, I, I believe this money is essential to get this work done on time. Um, are, are there any other comments or thoughts from folks on the committee? Um, I, go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, I, I, I generally uh, tend to agree with that. Uh, I would definitely support it. And uh, I think it's a good move. Uh, Laura? Mr. Chair, uh, I'm mobile, so I'm not uh, quite seeing the dynamics of the committee, but if there are no further questions, um, if you're looking for a motion on this, I would move that uh, our committee recommend, um, recommend funding this request to the uh, Appropriations Committee. Great. So we have a motion to uh, to make a recommendation to the Appropriations Committee. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, Avram, did you uh, want to chime in more? That, that was your second. That was your digital yes. second. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, we we don't. Uh, I don't think we need to take. Well, I know we don't need to take a formal vote in terms of a recorded vote. Um, but just for the purposes, what what I'm going to. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is, and this is what the chair of the Appropriations Committee has, had asked for, um, we don't need to do a formal letter. Um, and you'll find that when we get into um, uh, February in the formal budget process, the Appropriations Committee will come to our committee with a handful, maybe even more, things in their budget that they're looking for our input on. Typically, our feedback will be to send a formal letter um, with each item uh, uh, in the budget that is in our purview and give feedback on that and uh, a recommendation to support it or not. Um, this is gonna be a little less formal. I'm gonna send an email. I'm gonna copy um, Representative Pat and um, Representative Feltis on it, but I'm gonna send an email to um, uh, the chair of the Appropriations Committee just uh, mentioning that we discussed this and what our recommendation is, just so everybody knows kind of how this process will work. So, um, uh, Sally, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Well, maybe I interrupted you. So, so you're saying there's not going to be an, a, a vote? 
Are you well, we, we are gonna going to vote. We're, 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 we're about to do a vote right now. I'm okay. going to ask for, you know, people, uh, you know, an expression of support or not. And so that, um, you know, the idea is that we can tell the Appropriations Committee that, you know, whatever, um, you know, six of our committee members supported this, three did not. And, um, you know, by, by that ratio, we are offering our support or not for this. That's, that's what the communication will be. Typically with a bill, with a formal bill, we will take a recorded vote where it's clear for the record um, which members of the committee supported and did not support a bill. Um, this doesn't fall into that category of formality. This is, uh, again, it's just gonna be a recommendation. Um, but, but I think it's important to you know, let the um, Appropriations Committee know whether it was unanimous or not. And we'll, you know, we'll, provide, that, um, we'll provide that level of, of feedback. Okay. So, Except yeah, I think I think we should note since uh, since everything is being recorded, it essentially. Well, know, I'm going to ask people. It's on it's on YouTube, so so it will be out there. <laughs> yeah. Who voted what? Well, and and <laughs> I think it's a really good point. I mean, typically, how we will do this when we're in our committee room is I will literally ask for people to raise their hand. Um, and, you know, folks who, who, you know, support it, raise your hand, folks who don't, and then we'll record, you know, we'll record the vote that way. I'm going to do the same thing right now. Um, ask for people to, you know, to literally raise their hand, um, which, how about if we just show our hands on screen as opposed to our, our, our digital hand raise, if that works for people. I don't know if Laura can do that. Oh, that's right. Can you do that, Laura? <laughs> <clears throat> Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> or like other members, you could certify who you are and provide. Right. Them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to ask for a show of hands um, to support the recommendation of uh, this budget adjustment request from the administration. Um, so if I can have a show of hands for support of this. And, and okay. So I see your hand, Laura. And um, those, you can put your hands down. And uh, if you do not support this recommendation. Okay, great. So, um, so what I will express to, um, uh, to the chair of the Appropriations Committee is that by an eight uh, to one vote, uh, the committee um, recommends supporting this uh, uh, request from the administration. Uh, Except that Heidi's not here. Vote, so. Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you. 711. Thank you. 711. Beg your pardon. Got it. Okay, so um, folks, that is our morning business. Um, we are going to reconvene this afternoon at 1 30 with, um, with, uh, with the energy team from uh, the Department of Public Service. And uh, so we'll adjourn our committee hearing.